How am I to know? And how am I to see? The road keeps taking me from A to Z. All I really know. Slips away I would have been five or six years old and just just watching him play. Just he used to give me a buzz just watching him. I sometimes feel him around me, like he's guiding me. Yeah. The time just keeps calling. White Street. Oh, look at that. That's, that used to be a store that too used there. used to be a store still there. Born to Sicilian fruiter Salvatore and Australian born Mary in Tatur outside of Melbourne, Australia, Michael Charles couldn't have arrived into the world at a more befitting and advantageous time. His lifetime musical path will only be heightened within the explosion of Elvis, the Beatles, the Stones, and the entire music industry. The chords that my daddy taught me. Michael, tell us a little bit about that song. The first chords were mm. chords that my daddy taught me, and uh, um, without those few chords that he taught me, um, I may never play guitar. Play those I've got a chip on my tooth right here and I did it right on that pillar there, that brick pillar. Well, my parents were Catholic so they put me in a Catholic school and uh, I think I was there two years or so and I got, I believe two, three years maybe, I got expelled from that school um, and I still remember the nun taking me to the um, to staff room. And I saw her mixing this this stuff in, in, in a cup with um, a shaving brush. And uh, she came over to me and she told me to open my mouth and she started washing my mouth out with soap. The story behind that was that it was a very cold day and uh, she told me to do something. can't remember exactly what it was. And uh, I guess I didn't move fast enough and she clipped me on the knuckles with a, a ruler. It hurt like, uh, like hell. And uh, I told her to go and, you know, jump. They called my parents in and uh, pretty much said, you know, he's, we don't want him in this school. I will find my holy goal Where the road leads, I don't know as a small child, there was always that guitar staring at me and I was very, very uh, intrigued, uh, this love for, for this instrument. So, but I remember my dad saying to me, uh, and he put his finger up in my face like that and he'd say, when I'm not home, don't touch my guitar. I don't want you to break it. But you know, kids are kids and of course, when uh, he wasn't home, I would pick up this guitar and uh, the guitar used to feel like it was huge on me. I'm pretty sure he probably even saw me grab the guitar, me thinking he was outside in the garden or, or washing the car or doing something like that. And, uh, you know, as I say, kids are kids and we think we're smart, but we're not smart enough. Hard to remember back then at that exactly what age, but uh, I remember him buying me my own guitar and that was like, wow, God, I own a guitar. Yeah, well, I've been writing songs since I've been about 12, I think. My writing, in my case, is basically um, my own life experiences. I always played music. I remember well, even way back then when I was going to school and even when I left school, um, I was working three nights a week, two nights a week on weekends. And sort of, you know, just it sort of built up from that. I turned 16, I said to my 
parents, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a musician. I don't know. I've got no interest in school. I hated school. Um, I guess that's one of the reasons why at school didn't work out for me. I just didn't want to be there. I was always in a... I was that kid in the back of the classroom um, that's, you know, the, the daydreamer. There's always that one daydream in the back of the classroom. That, that would have been me. Uh, just dreaming about playing guitar and and just I had no interest at all in uh, anything else. 1972, a 16-year-old Michael forms and leads the band Black Belt. Searching is something we all seem to do to go on and live a better life. Got out of school and started playing music and I never looked back. No regrets. Well into his teen years, Michael chose this time to travel with some older seasoned musicians performing concerts, corporate gigs and weddings. Learning the elementary but essential skills from them, MC succeeded in honing his technique, becoming grounded in his roots. Part of me has become a part of you Nothing will matter We made the distance too Leaving the light on Feeling it get strong With all of the dreams That wandered through your mind A lot of time as a guitar player in a lot of bands. Picked up a guitar when I was just a boy. I played some cover tunes and I made some noise. My dad taught me on my first original chords, and I would just listen to the radio and, and records that my dad would uh, would be playing. And just learn songs that way. It's hard to compare yourself to somebody else. And so well, it sounds like so and so, but um, I don't know, it's just uh, each song I've got, it stands on its own. Problems I've come across, I suppose, is acceptance um, and doing it and doing it my way. There's nothing else I'd really want to do. I was probably about 12, 13 years old. My dad bought me my first electric guitar, an SG Gibson copy. Um, it was called Electra, and I still wish I had that guitar. It's actually my dad's fault for not having that guitar because um, a couple of years after that, he bought me um, a Fender Stratocaster. He said, oh, you're not gonna need this other guitar. So he traded it in. They gave him just about nothing for it. That guitar, disappeared. I wish I still had it, but I haven't.
But then I started again Cause it wasn't the end Finishing up this era of his young musical career, Michael joins the band Magnum and they cut their first recording in 1983. Going back, back in time, you were with the Magnum. I was in that band and as I say, I was, I was you know, a songwriter and uh, actually with another guy, uh, Robert Pagano. We wrote the songs for that band and being the guitar player, but I didn't know vocals in that band. I, th I think there was on the uh, on the album that came out, I, if I remember right, I think I sang one song mm. or something and I uh, said, so I'm not singing no more. We released uh, your Magnum album that, uh, many, many years ago on the magnetic record label. This is the sound of Australia's latest up-and-coming band, Magnum, that have just released their first LP through Magnetic Records with songs that will soon become your favourites. Magnum's self-titled album, available at local record bars. Later that year, with a newly gained confidence and the recording fever in his veins, MC felt the time was right to move forward once again as a leader and wasted no time in starting his personal career, releasing his first solo recording. Also in 1984, with new responsibilities, Michael drew on his business sense to fulfill his obligations to his family and to his career, forming his own record label, Moonlight Label. I only catch the heavy load. I know. Now married and with two children literally in tow at the recording studio, Charles starts a lifelong union with record producer Greg Williams and audio wizard Daniel Desiree of Dex Audio. When we first met, we worked on um, with That's a Love for Company, yep. the 12 inch yep. vinyl single. Yep. And I remember you telling me this run, we run the single on 45. Yeah. Better quality, right? Oh, yeah. And I said, well, we finished the song and then it was an afterthought. I said, I want a longer introduction. And we did the introduction and you just spliced it together. I spliced it together. Looking straight up to the sun. Back then, 45s were what you sent to radio. Exactly. And uh, radio likes three and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. And most of your tunes are much longer than three and a half minutes. A little bit. So <laughs> we got the razor blade out and we started cutting down the radio edits to fit three and a half minutes. When I think back now, how lucky are you to, to know at such an early age what you're going to do in, in, for a living or an occupation or your passion, what you've got in life. And I've always felt very blessed to be able to know that that's what I've wanted to do. And uh, it worked out, you know, that's, that's what I said I was going to do, that's what I'm doing and uh, I will continue doing it. My whole intention of, of doing what I do is, is to make people feel good. And I, if I can't make people feel good, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> My name is Alex Silverstein. I'm a film director based in Melbourne, Australia, Michael's old hometown. 
uh, he approached me to do a music video and uh, we had a great time doing it, lots of fun. And subsequently over the next uh, two years, uh, we did another two music videos for Michael um, and uh, found that we hit it off really well creatively. Years 1986 through 1989 saw three videos directed by Selick Silverstein, which aired on Night Shift, Rage, and Australia's MTV. The scene when you had me in the bed and all those clocks started coming down on me, you can actually see the wires <laughs> holding. <laughs> you could see the fishing line holding. And, that, and at the end of the day, it kind of made so that movie. scene, didn't it? The, the, like it was so hokey that it was just great. Michael, you're around promoting this oh, new album. It's called Home Through the Streets. Came in, I remember, with uh, some uh, master tapes. That some tapes you wanted to finish off? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we started um, cleaning them up. But by the time we finished, it was Home Through the Streets, yep. I believe. So yep. by the time we finished the album, I think there was about two tracks from the original things left. I think was all, <laughs> we re-recorded the whole thing. Right? <laughs> We got Michael climbing cliff faces, holding onto his legs while he dangled over a cliff uh, while playing guitar, uh, walking in amount, uh, among huge pounding seas. Down at uh, Cape Shank, um, he was uh, playing his guitar and a big wave comes. Uh, and remember Cameron grabbed him out of the way, otherwise he would have been sucked oh, out into yeah. the ocean. Just laughing at me. He walked in one day and he was playing back one of the older tapes. Yeah. And uh, you just walked in. I didn't really know you all that well because I was working with Greg. It just, just to this very day, it's just like still when I talk about it, it's like that was unbelievable. He walks in and he goes, "You may remember this." Walks in and he goes, "Those drums are recorded on the wrong side of the tape." <laughs> <laughs> one scene where you you recorded, you're filming the fingers, and they were actually, and if you look at it. You can see this big cliff here. They were holding me, and I'm doing. And I said, "You, where's the stunt man?" He goes, "You're it." And I'm, <laughs> I played this thing, man. I said, is, "We get it, we get it." And the wind's blowing, and it was a rough day. Oh. It was a rough day. <laughs> top of a uh, container, uh, doing his magnificent guitar solo, you know, being guitar hero. <laughs> is a double A side. Why did you go for double A as opposed to releasing two separate singles? Um, for the reason having two completely different songs on it. Um, having, see I've released a ballad on one side and an up-tempo number on, uh, on the other side. During this time, Charles traveled Australia on a promotional tour, appearing on numerous radio and television shows, along with magazine interviews in Muso, and musician's journal. She gives me love, she gives me hope, she gives me something I never had before. She was the woman I was looking for. I know now, need to look no more, cause she's my woman. The woman of my dreams. Cause she's my woman. The one I Something I don't know that we're really in 
Michael's done the program a couple of times, you'll remember I'm sure as soon as you see him. His third album's out. So how many albums did you do all together? Ooh, or... we did uh, two full albums. Yep. Uh, we did a number of singles. A 12 inch single. Yep. Plus, yeah, I don't know, several 45. Oh, I found out. Then my very first compilation CD, which was Hard Days and Long Nights. My everlasting love. Everlasting Love, one of Michael's last videos filmed in Australia, portrays the survival of love between a man and a woman. When Michael reveals his grandma's words during his last visit with her in the hospital before her death actually inspired him to write this song while sitting in the waiting room. Everlasting Love pays homage to his grandmother and her final expressions on love, beauty, and serenity. Love and pain and all those crazy things make us human down to our toes. Carry, carry me back to the place I once knew. I won't be looking, looking for love. I, I didn't say it out loud to too many people, but there was, um, in my own head, it was time to, to move on to something, but I wasn't sure what it was. Yeah, it, it, it felt like you were packing up. And we've got a clip of um, Running Wild. When did you write that? I actually wrote that uh, a couple of years ago. Um, finally got around recording it. Just waiting, I mean, I've got so much material that I've written. Uh, sometimes just sort of like close the eyes and take one from the bottom of the pile. Blue. Devotion and fidelity are deep-seated in the core of the man Michael Charles, and loyalty to family, his career, his friends, and his music are key. But when the good times became less and less, and the bad times became more and more in his 11-year marriage to wife Philippa, it finally dissolved. To Michael, it felt like a death. Retreating into seclusion, Michael struggled to make sense of his life and his choices. found consolation in his music and the songs that appear on My Shadow were the result of this low and desolate period of his life. Feel as though I'm a hundred and two A biology Maybe a thought or two It takes two to make a marriage work but it also takes two to make a marriage go wrong I try to change but you can't change history standing outside in the middle of the rain no wonder so I can't explain lost my home and I miss my child Still wondering how he would pull himself through, music once again offered the answer in an opportunity to perform in America at the world famous Buddy Guy's Legends in Chicago. Performing alongside his longtime hero, Mr. Buddy Guy, Michael glanced over, couldn't help but feel, this man may have just saved my life, that'll probably never know it. We'd like to say good evening 
This is the Michael Charles Blues Band. And Michael Charles is a young man from Australia. Give him a hand, y'all. He's come a long way to play the blues. A long way. So Michael was making his debut in the South Loop of Chicago. So y'all bear with him. He's a good guy. So in the meantime, in between time, put your hands together and meet brother Michael Charles. Watching uh, JBTV from downtown Chicago, and this is a unique program because this is the JBTV Blues Oasis. At this time, Michael meets and begins a relationship with Jerry Bryant of Chicago's JBTV. I've heard all your tunes and the CD. Now I'm going to show everybody this. Michael Charles is his name. Uh, the CD is Hard Days and Long Nights, and uh, the song Pain and Misery. That's going to be your big hit tune. So as soon as you get the video out, I want to play it first here on JBTV. Okay. Jerry filmed his station's first blues show, Blues Oasis, with Michael as the featured guest. I'm glad you guys had a chance to come on JBTV. It's been a lot of fun and thank you for having, for having me and, and George. Yeah, you guys are great. And you're always invited whenever, whenever you're in town, the JBTV Blues Oasis, you can do anything you want. Play the blues, sing the blues, do the blues. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. It's really great to play with a guy like Michael Charles. Well, I, I would think you'd say the same thing about uh, George here. Yeah, well, oh, I feel quite honored be playing with George. I mean, he's been um, not only a, a, a great musician to play with, but he's also been a good friend to me. When you come to a strange town, you need a good friend, and, and George is a good friend. Working with Michael live, we all know the songs um, throughout, but depending on the feel of the day, the mood of the day, we should call it, will really determine how that song is going to go off. Uh, Michael himself is um, has been doing this since he's so so young. It's automatic for him. No matter no matter what mood he seems to be in, it's automatic for him. Um, he's an amazing player, and he uh, and he, he tries to get that message across. There was always a guitar around the home, and um, just picked it up one day and never looked back. And uh, here I'm sitting here talking to you, so <laughs> in Chicago. <laughs> The guys I used um, on the show, we've never played together before. It's just put down. Tonight. Tonight. Tonight's their very yeah. first time together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Michael Charles. Michael Charles. That's it. Michael Charles. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Yeah. After traveling the 12,000 miles back and forth between Australia and the USA for two years, Michael decided his future and the continuance of his music career lie in America. Despite the immediate sacrifices and difficulties yet to come, Michael made the move to his new home. Came out to the States for a two week tour. And basically those two weeks, um, I extended my visas to stay in the US for six months and then I took another extension for another six months and then another year and another year after that and 28, 29 years later here I am still in the US. It's home. Far too long Coming back home As a young boy in Australia, Michael's strong fascination with America, especially the Wild West, 
in the 50s and the Americana music compelled his mother to declare to Michael, maybe you were born in the wrong country. Even Michael's attire shows the influence of the American cowboys as this is the reason Michael wears a vest at almost every performance. The influence on his music, that speaks for itself. just been living abroad for close to a year. I had just gotten back to the US. Don't have anything set up at all yet. And one of the first phone calls I got, pick it up, there's this Australian accent. Hello? Derek! Yeah? You're back in the US? Yeah. You got a job yet? No. You want one? Sure. Okay, you're gonna be my roadie. And that kind of set the course for the next year. stories, the road stories. Except my very first single and uh, my first album. Yeah. That I hide now, I just hide it. <laughs> it's just horrible. But apart from that, we did everything together when I was in Australia. Yeah. When I did move to the States, I did two albums. One I did it with uh, Jerry Soda, which is uh, a famous um, engineer that recorded like guys like Buddy Guy and uh, Junior Wells and all these historic blues guys. Yep. And did that album with him. But I felt very he was good at his job, but working with Greg for so long, I was very uncomfortable with that. So we got through the album, and then the second album attempt in the States was to keep walking and that's when I thought no I'm gonna do this myself and that's when I started buying equipment and, and built my first studio. wondering what had happened to Michael. I hadn't heard from him or done any more work with him. So uh, I typed his name into uh, YouTube and lo and behold, all these videos came up um, and I realized uh, that he'd been working, walking his path, uh, doing his music, uh, still independent and now living in Chicago of all places. <laughs> In addition to his lifetime membership in APRA, the Australasian Performing Right Association, in 1996, Charles becomes a voting member in NERAS, the National Association of Recording Arts and Sciences, where he enjoyed the title of Premier Entertainer for two years at their Chicago chapter. It was at one of these Grammy concerts that producer Jack Mel, after watching and listening to Michael on stage, approached Michael and offered him a contract. Ironically, Jack's record label is called Moonlight Records. He adores Michael, lavishes him with gifts of vehicles, guitars, amps and clothing, and releases My Shadow, Michael's first CD in the USA. Unfortunately, soon after this release, Jack took ill and was unable to continue work. Michael remained close with Jack and kept in touch with him until his passing. In this busy year, Michael is sponsored by Sam Phillips to perform at Rum Boogies for the Crossroads Festival in Memphis, Tennessee.
guy in the corner of the stage just wailing on his guitar. <laughs> One night after the, Michael's performance, he came down, was very shy. He said, um, you know, I noticed you've been at a lot of my shows, so thank you so much for coming. And I said, oh, my gosh, it's my pleasure. You're just amazing. booking and publicity he said well my, my manager went back to Australia so if you're interested in booking me you know please please do oh my gosh I could never book anybody on your level and he said well I'm not quite sure what you mean about level but he says no matter where you're on the ladder all the booking is the same you book one artist the same as you book another artist <laughs> So that's how it started. That was almost a quarter century ago. I do his publicity, I do his booking, um, kind of like his assistant, and he's taught me so much about business and about the music industry and also just about music itself. In 1996, with one foot out the door leaving to do a radio interview, Michael received a shocking phone call from his sister saying their mother had been diagnosed with a terminal illness, and one of her last wishes was to see her son in America. Arrangements were made for her and Michael's sister Carmel to make the grueling 27-hour flight. Frail but ever so beautiful, she did indeed witness Michael's success in the United States. So as she kissed her son goodbye for the very last time, she would travel back home with a satisfaction and in peace. This moment will be etched in Michael's heart and mind forever. As I play the song, I hear a voice in my head the words i hear are strong 1999 michael takes up stakes strange. and moves his career down to nashville for 18 months to move on through the hand 2000 mc makes the move back to chicago and builds his third recording studio it don't matter if the words don't rhyme you gotta keep on Keep walking And now I'll play them I'm gonna play them comes to the door with this funny accent. I was like, okay. Michael's from Australia. And uh, so once I realized that, I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> so we go into his home and uh, he has a wonderful studio. We went down and this guy strapped on his guitar. I was just lost for words. I was just standing there like my mind was just blown. This this musician, this, this guitarist was was just amazing. Welcome back to JBTV. You have a great CD, which I'll have to show here. And uh, there it is there. Now there it's it available is. all over. Do you have a website and everything? Yeah, just go on michaelcharles.us mm -hmm. and it's, it's there. And um, this is the official release date. On your show, so oh really? Yeah. So we're world premiering you go, your yeah. album right yeah. here on JBTV. I'm nobody's fool, 
nobody's fool, not even for you. I'll play the game when I'm here with you, but I'm nobody's fool. Michael will appear on WGN, Windy City Live, and JBTV, along with numerous other television shows. There's only two albums in my catalog that Greg hasn't been a part of. Yeah. Mm. Two. Yeah. I mean, we're talking probably, what, 35 years or something? Yeah. I don't know. I've lost track. <laughs> It's been a great, great experience having my son right next to me doing the same thing. Anyone that's got a son, any other dad that's got a son that follows the footsteps, it's always a, um, a great feeling. And I'm no different than any other dad, so it just made me feel good. It doesn't matter how long you've been playing, there's always something new to learn. And uh, as long as you keep that attitude that, you, that there's always something new to learn, you'll, I assume you'll become um, a better musician a better, and a better person. Son on your show. Yeah. Finally. Now, I don't mean to stay, but it's amazing how to rise up. 2008. Hip hop artist Majesty walks into a Chicago performance of MCs and talks to Michael after the show, saying he loves what he hears and wants to know if he can rhyme over MCs' songs. Michael says, Go for it, and the union began. Three years later, they cut the connected CD together and tour all through the USA. Canada and Australia, offering a unique combination of blues and hip hop. I'm having a great time with it. All the reaping the benefits of hanging out with a guy that's been doing this 45 years, and I've only been doing it about three years solid. Never would have had a chance to do this without someone like Mike. So, really appreciate the opportunity, and hope everyone likes the music that we're doing. Michael's career continues with all his ongoing relationships, venues, and agents as he continues to tour internationally. Came along. Life on the road, man. You know what they say, on the road again? Here we go, baby. He's the lazy guy. Yeah, clearly. We've got to go and do television, so and we've got to set up for a, another show. And Play another show, turn it back down. Turn it back down and move on. Life in, on the road in Canada. Hardest working man in show business, right here. I went to college for music, and uh, when it came time to graduate, uh, I uh, got a call from one of my teachers saying that there's a guy looking for a bass player, and it uh, turns out it was Michael. And we, uh, we eventually arranged a meeting, talked, and invited me to come out to a rehearsal, and I did. He must have liked something about me, because here I am. It's such a long and dusty high But now I'm gonna be with you. He is a very great musician, but also a very nice human being. Very friendly. He treats us like family. That's why I love Michael. 
beautiful thing about living in the United States is that I can just, it, it's, it's opened up a lot of doors for me now in Canada. <laughs> Legendary blues musician Michael Charles. Great to have you join us this afternoon, Michael. Michael asked me if I was interested in cutting up uh, some of his uh, um, concert footage. Well, I thought about it for a while, but then I started to think about the journey that Michael has taken. Um, how courageous and uh, uh, determined he has been, uh, coming from a small, uh, then small uh, city uh, at the bottom of the world and moving to Chicago. Uh, and I said to him, I think there's a bigger story here, Michael. Michael has never backed down from a challenge. That's a gentleman that I know that truly believes in what he's doing. He loves to do it. Every challenge I've seen him uh, confront, he's made it through it. My dad did say to me, um, I think you should do something just in case you need to fall back on something. So I did choose to uh, do an apprenticeship as a motor mechanic. I loved cars, so I um, I did that with uh, with a, with a passion. I really enjoyed doing my apprenticeship. In June 2013, the village of Maywood, Illinois recognizes Michael Charles by inscribing his name on the Welcome to the City sign. Seven at the Chicago Blues Fest was the first time I saw Michael play live and um, ever since then I just was just following his career. And now um, you know I, I work on the road with Michael, I take care of his gear, Officially recognized and inducted as the National Blues Artist of the Chicago Blues Hall of Fame. Good luck to Michael. Michael is honored at Buddy Guy's Legends in Chicago by the Blues Hall of Fame, being inducted as a Master Blues Artist in 2015. And uh, you got into the Blues Hall of Fame. Tell us about that and when did that happen? Uh, that was a couple of years back. and. Um it just was one of those things. I mean, it's a, it, I, I never thought about it. I, I didn't even, you know, it wasn't on my mind. It was lasting on my mind. I was actually in the studio working on uh, one of my tracks at the time, and uh, when she told me, I just said, oh, yeah, cool. And, uh, <laughs> And I was cool. in, kind of kind of right into what I was doing. Then a, a few minutes later, it kind of hit me, and I thought, "Wow." I'll just pick up my guitar and, and, and play, you know, even mm -hmm. just off, as I say, off duty, I guess, when I'm not on the road. Yeah. Home, it, it's, it's my hobby, it's my relaxation, and and that's when I write my songs when I'm in my own time so if, I've, if I'm having a sad moment I'll write one type of song if I'm 
I mean, uh, if something great has happened <laughs> in my life, I'll write another kind of song. <laughs> Just let me say, the songs that you write um, and the music that you play is an open book on the life of Michael Charles. Um, your songwriting and guitar playing express everything there is to know about you. And um, it's all there for anybody who cares to listen. And I know that I have heard it all. And I love you. In 2016, during his ninth consecutive tour, the Coming Back Home Tour, Michael really returned home to Australia to film and record for the documentary you are now viewing. Tickets for Michael Charles Friday night at the Caravan Club. One show only, then he's back on the road doing what he does. Yes, we're back with uh, my guest, whom uh, I mentioned is playing tomorrow night at uh, the Caravan. We're gonna go and do this gig. Caravan Club in Oakley when you were uh, on tour last time and it was a packed uh, audience of standing room only which was great. Uh, you blew the place apart. You seem to pull such a big crowd no matter where you go. I'm just hoping that you've got some plans in the not too distant future to come back to Melbourne. so many things you, you, you've had such a wonderful career and still going we've, we've just barely scratched the career of Michael Charles to all over the US um, to all over Canada go back to Australia and we do a tour out there as well time is not a friend you need to move on Hold on to the one you love Before it's gone All I really know Time Slips away As I remember, just in my childhood, it was this thing that I just wanted to play music, 
and um, and I feel exactly the same now as I did when I was five or you know six years old. Thank you. 